Welcome to the Petzl Technical Institute, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. Petzl is one of our gear experts' core partners that focuses on safety and productivity for workers who apply their trade in ad height industries. Consisting of 15,000 square feet of state-of-the-art technical training space, the Petzl Training Institute is located in the heart of the Salt Lake Valley. It was designed specifically to meet the needs of highly specialized clientele and the industries that we and Petzl serve. To name a few of its features, it has over 5,000 square feet of structure for technical climbing, rescue, and rope access techniques. A three-story vertical confined space training apparatus, 36-foot tall drop test structure, multiple classrooms capable of accommodating up to 135 people and more. Plus, Petzl's North American headquarters was designed with their focus on reducing the environmental impact as much as possible as a LEED Platinum facility. This facility was built to the highest standards of sustainability, efficiency, innovation, design, and workplace experience. We sincerely appreciate the partnership that the GME Supply family of companies has with our friends at Petzl. We are America's premier outfitter of fall protection, safety equipment, and gear for at-height workers. We keep workers safe and productive on the job by offering customers timely service and expertise. Our gear experts are here to be an extension of your safety program, offering solutions and consulting in any way possible to make sure that your gear is where you need it, when you need it. One of the best ways we can do that is through our national network of distribution locations and training facilities. Everyone expects to be able to order something online or through our gear experts and get it in just a day or two. And that's what our national footprint allows us to do. Let's take a look at the time and transit for standard ground shipping from our various locations. Beginning with our headquarters centrally located in Columbia, Missouri, we're local to the heart of America. Our second location opened in Atlanta, Georgia in 2015 to service the East Coast and Southeastern U.S. In 2018, our location in the heart of Texas opened in Dallas, further establishing our southern presence. In 2020, we opened a location in Corona, California, where we have hosted live streams in the past. Late last year, we welcomed custom tool supply to our family out of Denver, Colorado. As you can see, the majority of the U.S. population is within a two-day ground shipping point from one of our locations, meaning you don't need to pay extra for expedited shipments. And look for our quick ship items, which ship the same day as long as you place the order by 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Thanks for tuning in today, and enjoy the exclusive training session ahead. All right, hello and welcome everyone to our third and final uh, live stream training session. I'm Alex from GME Supply, Columbia Safety and Supply and Custom Tools Supply. And uh, we are once again here in the Petzl Technical Institute in Salt Lake City. Uh, in case no one tuned into the uh, first one, haven't seen that one yet, if you want to go ahead and give yourself a quick introduction. Sure, I'm Keith. Thanks for having me back again. I'm glad I did well enough the other day that you invited me back again. Certainly. Well, uh, for today's session, we're talking about uh, some basic rope access techniques, plus some uh, tips and tricks for uh, a wide variety of industries uh, with the different gear that's involved in some uh, basic rope access. So if you're ready, we can go ahead and jump right in. Sure. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, so what is basic rope access work? So when uh, someone thinks of that term, their mind might immediately jump to sprat and highly technical uh, things, but uh, like high angle rescue techniques, that sort of thing. But uh, we're seeing more and more in a variety of industries, some more basic rope access techniques being introduced uh, to what may be um, a more traditional type of at height work. Um, so can you talk us through what the basics of rope access are and how it's different from uh, other access methods? Sure. So like I said the other day, my background is in rope access. Before I came to Petzl, I worked in the rope access industry for a little over 10 years, and it's kind of my bread and butter. But that doesn't mean that I think rope access is the end all be all of all access techniques. There are plenty of other access techniques out there that work really well in other applications. 
So for example, swing stages for involved building maintenance work or pipe frame scaffolding for large construction projects. Sure. Rope access is great though when you need to hang somebody on a rope and get them into hard to reach locations for sure. So what is rope access? From a technical and equipment perspective, it's pretty much just hanging somebody at height on a redundant system. 99% of the time, what that looks like is hanging somebody on a two rope system. So hanging on one rope and having a second rope as a backup. But there's some other really interesting applications where rope access is used. One that comes to mind would be, for example, bridge engineers inspecting the underside of a bridge and using beam clamp anchors to aid climb underneath the bridge girders. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, I guess an important point for rope descent systems is uh, that the descender can be used as a fall arrest. Is that, is that correct? Or um, I guess what makes rope access techniques unique? Right, yeah, so rope descent on the face looks really similar to rope access. It's somebody hanging on a descender with a separate fall arrest system. And the Spratt website actually has a really good FAQ section. So Spratt is the Society of Professional Rope Access Technicians. And they have a really good description that distinguishes rope access from other types of suspended work. And some of the really important things to remember about rope access is that the technicians go through a really rigorous training and certification process. So most rope access technicians have to go through a 40-hour training and certification before they're even allowed to set foot on the job site. There's also rescue planning, uh, rescue training and practice. So one of the things I mentioned in our last session a couple days ago is that it's really important for everybody on a job site to have some level of rescue training. And under the rope access paradigm of training and certification, literally everybody with the certification is trained in self and partner rescue. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've covered kind of the overview of what rope access is on a basic and technical level, uh, the next obvious question might be, okay, I want to get into that type of work uh, on my job site, so what do I need? So with that being said, what type of gear do you need? Um, and to start using these techniques, and how should a company or organization go about the training aspect? Sure. So from the equipment perspective, it's rope access, so we need ropes to start out with. So for each person, you need two ropes. Generally, worldwide, pretty much all rope access technicians use 11 millimeter diameter rope or 7 16 inch diameter rope. But there's nothing that precludes other industries from using different diameter ropes. So I know the telecom industry is a fan of the larger half inch diameter ropes. And if they wanted to, they could for sure implement a system using two half inch ropes. It is fairly important though that both those ropes are the same diameter and construction. So the main suspension rope and the, the backup or fall arrest rope. And that's because in some applications, most notably rescue, you want those ropes to be interchangeable with everything in your system. So if somebody has to come rescue you, there's a chance they might have to climb up on your backup rope. So it's good to have both ropes the same size. So that's the rope. We need harnesses, so full body harness, with some sort of frontal connection point that you can hang off of. So tower workers, they like the harnesses with the built-in work seat and kind of the extended connection point. Rope access technicians tend to prefer harnesses with a central or ventral connection point that's right on the waist, but they just need some type of harness that's gonna let them connect frontally to a work positioning system. And then you also need connection for a fall arrest system on that harness, so either a sternal or dorsal connection. And in terms of the, the Petzl harness lineup, the go-to rope access harness is the Petzl Astro. That has the uh, built-in chest ascender that makes uh, sending really efficient. Perfect. And then uh, after you get through your uh, rope and harnesses, what other kind of accessory items do you need uh, to complete your kit? Sure, so the equipment that we're using for the main rope that we're hanging on, so ascenders like the Petzl Ascension handle descender, we'll need a descender as well, like the Petzl rig or ID descender. And then finally, we need a fall arrest 
or backup device. And sorry, I see I'm talking a little bit too fast <laughs> no for worries. our uh, videos that we have popping up here. But yeah, the, the Petzl ASAP, at least in the United States, North America, is pretty much the go-to fall arrest device for the rope access industry. Okay, perfect. Um, and while we're talking about uh, the ASAP, and uh, I know we'll get to that in a second, but um, let's talk about ANSI. So ANSI is obviously a big deal in at height industries. Mm -hmm. um, and when people think of rope access, SPRAT techniques or certifications, that might not uh, be as involved, but they're still using ANSI compliant gear, right? Sure. So I know a lot of uh, the questions that we see uh, are breaking what ANSI is down and how it relates to OSHA and mm -hmm. other uh, you know, certifications, laws, that sort of thing. So can you kind of jump into how Petzl's equipment uh, works within ANSI and OSHA? Right, yeah. So this is actually a really common question that we get here at Petzl, trying to lay out the difference between ANSI and OSHA. So ANSI is the American National Standards Institute, and they make voluntary standards. Most notably for our conversation, they make uh, standards for work at height equipment under ANSI Z359. They also have standards on head protection, ANSI Z89, and then standards for protective eyewear, ANSI Z87. And like I said, ANSI is a voluntary standard creation body, but OSHA does sometimes incorporate ANSI standards into their regulation. Uh, as an example, ANSI Z89 and Z87 for headwear and eyewear, the OSHA regulations specifically lay out if you're wearing a helmet, it has to be Z89 certified. If you're wearing safety eyewear, it has to be Z87 certified. <clears throat> That's not the case with harnesses or lanyards or connectors, actually. Um, there's certainly sometimes a good case for using that ANSI certified equipment, but there's no OSHA regulation on that. Yeah, and I, I believe there are certain industries that almost mandate, in a way, that you're using ANSI gear, but um, in it per the law for OSHA, that's not technically a regulation, but. For sure, like the tower industry, for example, you pretty much have to have those four letters, ANSI, stamped on every piece of equipment if you wanna walk on the job site. Right. And one of the interesting things about rope access equipment now is, you know, 30 years ago, there was this kind of, uh, maybe it was the reality or at least perception that rope access technicians were out there just using rock climbing equipment, but, Equipment has evolved so much now that you can pretty much have a 100% ANSI certified rope access system. Perfect. Okay, and so let's jump back to the ASAP. So um, it's obviously a really interesting and versatile device. Um, and because it's ANSI certified and kind of transcends just about every industry when you're working on ropes and at right. height, um, can you kind of go through what the components are that go into the ASAP system and the ANSI certification? Sure, yeah. So this is another really common question we get here because there are so many options to uh, putting together an ANSI vertical lifeline or ANSI fall arrest system. So looking at the device itself, we have the ANSI, or sorry, the ASAP and the ASAP lock. And the ASAP lock is generally the one preferred for rope access technicians because it doesn't have to be disconnected from your harness to install it on the rope. So it's a great um, drop resistant option for working at height. Next, we have the lanyard options. So the ASAP has to be used with an energy absorbing lanyard to your harness. And we have the ASAP Zorber line, and there are three models. We have the ASAP Zorber 20, ASAP Zorber 40, and ASAP Zorber Axis. So the 20 and 40 refer to the length of those lanyards in centimeters. So the 20 is about eight inches long, the 40 is about 16 inches long. And all three of them are ANSI certified for up to a 310 pound user weight. But the ASAP absorber axis specifically is validated by Petzl to also be used up to 550 pounds. So for folks that are looking for kind of a one-stop shop, fall arrest device that can be used for a one-person use, but also can be used in a two-person tandem descent rescue, the ASAP absorber axis is the, the one energy absorber that we recommend. Perfect. And then um, another kind of confusing piece is the entire system and how that relates to ANSI. Sure, yeah. So the last component is the rope. 
And the ASAP is compatible with Kern Mantle life safety ropes from 11 to 13 millimeters in diameter. And if folks want the full ANSI certified system, we have the Ray rope, which kind of uh, finalizes the whole, every component of the system. Perfect. Okay. Um, and so I kind of teased this in the live stream yesterday, but we have some tips and tricks uh, and uh, some stuff that we, we have pre recorded to kind of show some techniques that we can talk through, similar to what we did in the first session. Yeah. So, uh, what are some of the tips and tricks that you're willing to share um, that if people are just getting started with the gear or may have experience and just might not know that this is another way that the equipment can be used? Yeah, so I think we have a few videos and some images queued up here. So we'll start out with a few basic rope access techniques. So here we're going to take a look at pretty much the most basic rope access maneuver that you have going up and down a vertical set of ropes. So here I'm setting myself up for ascent. The yellow rope is my primary rope or my work positioning rope, if you will and I'm setting up with ascenders. So I'm using the integrated chest ascender on the Astro harness. And then that blue rope on the right is my fall arrest or backup rope. And that's where you got the ASAP lock. Exactly. And so here I'm going to transition to descent. So I climbed up on my ascenders and I'll transition to my descender on the Petzl ID. And this is pretty much the, the first maneuver that you'll learn in a rope access class, how to change over from one set of equipment to another. So you can see it's, once you learn the process, it's just a couple seconds to transition your equipment to going up to down. And then in the rope access classes, folks will often learn how to climb up on their descender as well. So if you need to move up and down quite frequently, transitioning back and forth, or if you're just working a short distance, it's quite easy to go up on your descender a short distance if you need to. If you have to climb, sorry, excuse me, if you have to climb a long ways, the integrated chest descender is really the way to go. But for short ascents, climbing on your descender is really fast. Awesome. And the nice thing about being on your descender is you can instantly descend. Exactly, right? yeah, no transition. Perfect. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and queue up that second video. All right, so here it's a pretty similar system actually, going up and down on a two rope system, but this is more for the tower industry. So I have a vertical lifeline again with the ASAP, and instead of using a second full rope with the Petzl ID on it, this is using the Grion essentially as a mini descender system. So I'm using the Grion in single mode, and this is the, the Grion MGO, which has that large MGO connector to clip right onto the steel structure. And so I can use the Grion to descend down that rope, and then similarly put an ascender on the rope to climb back up. So this would be, you know, obviously in this scenario, you could just climb up the face of the tower, but if you exactly. were working under uh, a boom on a, a monopole, for instance, and needed exactly. to get down to the bottom of an antenna, you could use that Grion in single mode and then easily climb back up exactly. to, to the structure. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then finally, uh, we've got one last one. This is a, a little bit more technical, um, but it's kind of just showing how easy it is to do this technique. Right, yeah, so this is a rope to rope maneuver. And I think this really highlights where rope access techniques can become really beneficial for getting to hard to reach locations. So here you can see I'm setting myself to climb up on that set of ropes on the left, but on the right, I have another set of ropes just clipped off to that carry tool accessory carabiner on the left-hand side, or sorry, on my left-hand side, on the right-hand side of the screen. And so here I'm going to use these uh, two two rope systems, so four ropes total, to do some horizontal movement in free space. So I'll climb up on that left set of ropes and I'll transition eventually onto my descender, onto my Petzl ID, onto that same rope like I did before, going up and down on one rope.
Yeah, so this is essentially the exact same thing that we just saw. Yep, exactly. Putting, putting all the weight onto the ID. All the weight on the ID, except I just have that extra set of ropes hanging off my side for now. So you can see I'm taking my time making sure I don't get myself tangled on camera. That's one of the things that rope access students spend a lot of time learning how to do in their classes is how to keep themselves from getting tangled up. So here you can see I'm hanging on those two ropes that go straight above me and I get my equipment established on that other set of ropes. So I'm hanging on my ID on that blue rope above me and then the blue rope coming in from the side goes into my Kroll chest descender and I put the handle descender on that other rope. So now you've got your backup lifeline on both ropes. Yep. And there you can see, once I start lowering out on the ID, I'm just doing purely horizontal movement. So if we're working in free space, needing to move purely left and right without anchors directly accessible to you, the rope to rope, it's, uh, like you said, a more advanced maneuver, but uh, an awesome way to position horizontally if you need to. Yeah, and so then once you're hanging completely vertical on that second set of ropes, you can disconnect from the first set, clean up your gear, and throw it the descender on and head to the ground. Right. All right. All right, awesome. So uh, I guess to, to close this out, we have a few rapid fire tips uh, yeah. that we've got loaded up. So if you wanna go ahead and run through that, we got a little bit of time left here. Sure, yeah, so I think we have six tips loaded up here to show folks uh, some interesting things that we have on the Petzl website. So these are all in our tech tips section on the website. So this is setting up a releasable lifeline using the ID or rig descender. So a vertical lifeline anchored off to one of those descenders is a great, really quick way to be able to lower somebody if they've fallen onto a lifeline and need to be lowered to the ground. Awesome. Next, like I said, ascenders, we use them for efficient means of going up a rope, but we can also use it for going down a rope in really short distances, similar to climbing up a rope with the ID descender. You can also go down on ascenders if you want. And we have this interesting tech tip for going down. Perfect. I think you mentioned with Michelle yesterday, the Grion has become pretty much uh, a standard tool for telecom technicians. And the Grion, it has a lot of uses. And one of the really neat ones for longer versions of the Grion is building a horizontal lifeline. So you can anchor the Grion at either end and have folks clip onto it as a temporary horizontal lifeline. Awesome. Some fancy knot craft. If people need to install a vertical lifeline or really any rope system uh, spaced in between two horizontal anchors and center the rope between the two of them or have some sort of redundancy between their anchors, you can use the double loop figure eight or the bunny ears knot, which some people refer to it as, to connect one rope to two anchors. Nice. Tensioning or hauling a rope through the ID we can use a rope grab and a pulley or a pulley carabiner like the Petzl roll clip. And we can use this for either tensioning horizontal lifelines or for hauling light loads. And finally, for folks out there that are doing hot work or grinding work, and you wanna keep your, um, your personal rope, your synthetic rope out of the way of hot metal splash, you can extend your descender using a steel rope lanyard to just move that ID up higher and then keep the rope behind you. And then you're not at risk of damaging the rope that's right next to the grinding material. Perfect. And like you said, all those tech tips are available in more detail on the Petzl website. Exactly. Yeah, the full detail and the disclaimers and how to do everything properly. Awesome. Well, again, thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, like we've said in the previous ones, if you have any questions uh, about any of the topics that we've talked about the last few days, reach out to any of the gear experts or Petzl directly, and uh, we can certainly help you out there. Like you said, tons of information, tech tips on their website. We also have a wealth of information on our YouTube channel, on our knowledge base. Uh, so 
like I said before also, uh, these are available to rewatch and to share if uh, you didn't catch all of it, you want to rewatch anything or um, send it out to your company or your friends or anything like that. So once again, thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks for having us out here in Salt Lake. Thanks, it was Alex. a great time. And uh, until next time, we'll see you. Thanks, week. everyone.